Hello, this is Esa Holopainen from Amorphis and from my Silver Lake project, and you are listening to Sonic Perspectives. I stand on the shore, praying under the sky, telling me more to know, or should I believe? This is my home. Thank you very much, Esa, for being with us today. Uh, we are excited to, you know, ask you a few questions regarding your upcoming solo album this is going to be your first album as a solo artist the mm -hmm. album is called uh, silver lake by essa holopainen and it will be released on may 28th by nuclear blast uh well first of all how are you doing essa i'm doing fine i'm doing fine um yeah at the moment we are working with the uh, next amorphous album we are in the middle of recording so so doing pretty busy and fine right right on so uh i, I would say My first question uh, regarding uh, Silver Lake would be, would you believe this album would have never been recorded if it weren't for the pandemic? I don't think so. Um, I really don't think so. Um, I think um, I needed this time and I needed uh, a little kick to my butt to get this started. So that I got from my friend who was uh, running a studio here nearby in Helsinki, and he's a good friend of mine, a producer, and, and uh, called Nina Lauren, and, and he's been actually, actually recorded a couple of Amorphis albums as well, so, so yeah, he gave me a call and, and, and asked that would I be interested to start to work with my solo album as, as I got all the touring plans and shows cancelled, cancelled, and, and that was pretty much how the whole thing got started, and, and Yeah, to answer to your question is, is absolutely. I, I think I wouldn't started this without without the pandemic. Otherwise, we would have been on tour and and with Amorphis, and then after the tour periods, we would have started to work with the album. With right. The so album. you can definitely agree that it's a positive outcome of this whole mess, right? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. It's uh, yeah. If if you don't look the health issues and and everything everything bad that the the pandemic has given to us i think i think the positive thing is that, that the musicians me included have been super creative and and uh, and really had to take the time off and and we've been pretty hectic band yes. touring wise with amorphis so and everything has been super hectic and and uh, i didn't I, i i'm pretty sure that that making own album in between touring periods or wherever would, would have never ever come to across my mind. Right, right. And um, so about the name of your solo project, right? Silver Lake. Uh, mm. How did you come up with that name? Is it a reference to Finnish culture somehow? No, it doesn't reference. It's, um, it's a name I wanted to name that, um, first of all, I didn't want this project to be just under my name because it's there's so many musicians and and great yes. vocalists so so i didn't didn't feel good about just releasing this album under my name Esa Holopainen and then something so um i I wanted to have a proper project name and I wanted it to be some way connected into nature, which for me is a huge source of inspiration and i I live quite next to quite next to nature all my life. Um, Silver Lake was something that popped up like really accidentally. I was recording guitars here in my home studio and and uh, and I saw one reverb pedal, like guitar pedal, and it said Silver Lake digital reverb. And I knew immediately that that's that's that is going to be <laughs> the name for my project. It's going to be Silver Lake by us. Right. Sometimes th these things happen <laughs> out of nowhere, and that's the inspiration you need, right? <laughs> yeah. It was it was really actually too simple to be true because right. I I was really you know thinking hard about about uh, the right name for this project. So so it, that was perfect. It was absolutely perfect, and uh, that's exactly you know I. I took promo shots next to Lake before I even 
titled this this name as Silver Lake. So, so um, I could easily see the surface of a lake and and sun. You know, when sun is shining brightly, you can see the surface of the lake, and it's almost silverish, sparkling. So, right. That was the image I had in my head. So perfect. And it's a perfect Finnish image, I would say, you know, with Finland having so many lakes. It, I guess it's a common view for you there. <laughs> it is, and it's funny because a, a lot of people have asked, does the name come from uh, Amorphous uh, album title and song titles? We have a song called Silver Pride and, and right album called Thesmer Thousand Lakes. But right. It's, 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 <laughs> that's also a good good connection, but it doesn't come from there. <laughs> yeah. So and and talking more about the 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 cover artwork, it's a beautiful cover artwork, I would say. And uh, what can you tell us about? I mean, the the person who did this artwork, who is the artist? He's he's a person called Val Noir, and he's French uh, French artist, uh, visual artist. He works quite a lot with the underground bands and and uh, also with uh, with. Uh, more commercial band so to speak he's been doing art for ghost for example and he did last two amorphous album covers he's been working with soil work uh, he's uh, i consider him nowadays as a friend of mine and he's uh, he's a uh, he's unique and, and really nice guy so um I trust his artwork and his vision. So, so um, as soon as I started this project, I wanted him to to plan the visual side. And, and when I named my project, I, I told him that this is going to be the name of the project. And please feel free to to work with the visual art. And uh, the only thing what I wanted was was the because I knew that he's going to do very decorated logo for me. That logo is going to be the center spot on the album cover, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. But he's, he's a great, he's got a great eye for visuals. Yes, I mean, you can tell it's, it's a beautiful artwork for sure. Um, we just curious, we were curious about who the artist was. Um, uh, Esa, if you don't mind, I would like to maybe talk a little bit about some, uh, some of the songs in the album. Uh, we basically had the opportunity to, hear uh, an advance of it and I must say it is uh, pretty good excellent I would say <laughs> so okay, congratulations congratulations you. on your work um, uh, I've been basically an amorphous fan for a lot of years and um, I was surprised when when I heard this this solo project which I think it's it's pretty good so I would like to go with the, some of the songs in in, in the album mm -hmm. uh, Let, let's begin with the first one, with, with the instrumental or Silver Lake. Um, what was your main inspiration for that outstanding main theme? Uh, the main inspiration for that was the last song of this album, um, Apprentice. And uh, I really love the theme on Apprentice. And um, I loved it so much that it, it really stuck into my head. And I, yes. I I performed it in a slightly different way, and it, it started to turn out, um, you know, it, it started to turn into more into instrumental version, and and uh, that that's how how I got inspired of making the, the the first track. I I wanted to do at least one instrumental song for this album, and, and that, that's the song there. And in a way, I love the idea that that. It's introduced by a theme, musical theme that is also closing the whole album. So, uh, so yeah, I'm I'm always been a little fan for cinematic music and 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 uh, not that classical music, but but more like uh, dynamic movie movie score music. Yes, if you will. So that's got a little bit inspiration from that era as well. You can certainly feel that cinematic uh, feel to it. Um, it it's, it's, it's certainly beautiful and moving and uh, I, uh, epic even, I would say. Uh, mm -hmm. So probably one of my favorite melodies from the whole album. So yeah, oh, congratulations, congratulations on that one. Um, mm -hmm. Before we, we continue with the rest of the songs, I, I, I was meaning to ask you a question regarding the musicians. 
Uh, did you use several session musicians per song, or did you keep a core ensemble, say, for the whole album? Uh, that was my original plan. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> that I, I am going to only need a drum player, and that's how the session pretty much started. I, I called up my friend Gas Lipstick, who is, who is uh, I think people know him better. Yeah, from him. He, yeah, he was the ex trumpet player from him. He's uh, my old friend. Like even before he was playing in him, uh, and uh, and yeah, I I asked if he could help me out with uh, with a couple of tracks to play proper drums, and and those songs actually are, "Sentiment," "Ray of Light," and "Promising Sun," where Gas Gas play drums. But uh, my producer Nino was strongly against the idea that I would I would pl play the final bass lines and 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 keep my keyboard lines. And we definitely need need proper guys for that. And uh, I have really really good guys there. This uh, bass player is uh, is a guy called Pasi Heikkila. He is a songwriter partner with uh, with Nino, my producer, and he also teaches bass in Music Academy here. Um, he he is really really good and solid bass player. Uh, Vili Itapelto is a young guy who played keyboards. Well, not that young, but younger than me. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> but he teaches teaches um, piano in 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 music school here, and he's got a great great sense of of uh, real organic keys, uh, Hammond organ, Rhodes Mellotron, and and besides that, he's got a great taste of of picking up right synthesizer sounds and, and he's like he loves 80s music so he's really really a fan of like i think it's very common with keyboard players that they love this this 80s synthesizer sound so he's good with that those okay. guys are like the, the core of the band i had Perfect. another trump player as well who is uh, he's also a producer but he's a really good trump player comes from from totally different scene his his name is Sampo Harpaniemi, and he is uh, he produces Finnish pop music and Finnish schlager music. So he's <laughs> this 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 uh, uh, metal or harder rock scene is 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 really unknown thing for him. So, but that, that was one of the greatest thing on this album that that you have a really groovy drum player who is not used to play metal music or not. Right, and harder way and when when he does that he does it in very cruel way and, and you get this that sort of like a john bonham right and and, and you can tell that it, it adds definitely to the you know the variety that it is presented on the i mean throughout the whole album absolutely absolutely so you know every musician is, is super musical and and i think that that also can be heard on the album yes correct i mean you can tell the there's a a big level of musicianship as far as you know as as the the, the melodies and the music go um mm. talking more about uh the the guest vocals and here is where we are gonna uh, probably uh, gonna go a little bit deeper so for for the second song sentiment uh, you know actually well the fact that uh jonas was used in two of them songs uh sentiment as we can call it the opener and apprentice as the closer. I, mm. I feel there's like a, a, a cycle there, like a beginning and an end to the album. Um, was there any preference from your part from the beginning in inviting Jonas for two songs or was it more of a spontaneous occurrence? It was very spontaneous. And, uh, you know, the, the first vocals that I got for these songs, uh, I got from Jonas for sentiment. He, he, I, you know, I, I sent the demo version from Sentiment to him, and it took like a week or two, and he sent me his demo vocals, and I, I was absolutely stunned. It, it was that good. It was it was something I, I've never heard from anyone. It, it was so solid stuff that it could have been like <laughs> straight to the album stuff. But um, you know, and but I also realized how how well he worked. Uh, with those parts and with the harmonies and with the, with the vocal lines, and it was simply perfect. And from that point, I knew that I, I need to write another song for for Jonas, and I, right. I want to have another song song sung by him. And 
and when that song Apprentice started to come up, at that point I knew that this is this is going to be like a nice ending for the album. And and I I worked uh, kept in mind that this this song is going to to end the album and, and try to try to have sort of like a, you know the ending feeling. You, that's what I always love about the. The songs that are ending the album, they are as important as the song that is opening the album. You know, you you want to you want to leave the picture that that you know the listener wants to wants to listen to the album again and wants to spin it again. So it's 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 for me the albums are like like a mov- movies that you want to watch again. Right, right, and uh, of course, outstanding performance by Jonas. I mean, he's a very well known vocalist he has a particular range uh, and i must say yeah both songs are unbelievably good Um, yeah it's beautiful voice mm -hmm, it's it's mm -hmm. really unique voice for sure and um and as i'm moving along uh, so for the third song which is of course the the first single that has been released so far uh from this album uh the the song storm featuring hawk and hamlin do you feel there was a risk involved in releasing this particular song as the first single, being it's such an, a typical song when compared with your previous work with Amorphis? <laughs> it, yeah, <laughs> of course. There, there was a couple risk issues that that we were pondering. Um, that was the song that me and Nino, my producer, really got into, and and we were so stunned when we heard. Hawkins' voice on that song, and uh, and it's different. But on the other hand, all the songs are slightly different from each other. And we right. didn't, yes. did, didn't want to introduce this project uh, by doing something super obvious. And the, on the other hand, it, it would be a bit difficult because the next song, probably what we're going to release, is again very different from from what Storm is. Um, and another thing is that that outside of Scandinavia, I think I don't think anyone knows who who Hogan Hamlin is. So, uh, but I didn't want to that to bother. I, I really wanted to release a song that I, I I felt good about myself, and and I I really wanted to introduce uh, as as the first first single. And very good thing was as well that that. Uh, when we started to plan the video for the song, um, I know one video director, Uwe Lingval, who actually shoot one amorphous video, Silver Pride, uh, several years ago. He's a good friend of Hawkins, and he was about to go to Canary Islands to his uh, to his apartment, and he called up to Hawken and asked, you know, you want to join me in Canary Island? It's going to be sunny and and funny <laughs> there, and we're going to shoot video for Esa. And yeah, that's how it happened. And actually, those guys are still in in Canary Island. They left there on New Year's Eve or something. And I I think they are now living. <laughs> they they, they <laughs> living fell in love with it. yeah. They fell in love with the place. I mean, and, and who wouldn't? To be honest, uh, the video Absolutely. is strikingly beautiful, and it was well shot. And actually, impressed with with the natural beauties that you can find there in the Canary Islands. Yeah, and it's it's it gave the song the whole other meaning because I um, I know that that Hawken now he actually moved to Canary Island and he's oh, going wow. to live he's going to live there. <laughs> it, now when I listen to the lyrics and he is he is traveling around Canary Island and and uh, singing that this is the place where he belongs, it, it's sort of uh, it's weird. <laughs> right, it's <laughs> like it, it, it was meant to be, right? Like it's it's matching perfectly with his. You know, situation. Um, yeah, the, the the song has this sense of like, I don't know, like freedom. I would say, uh, mm. which is pretty uplifting, in my opinion. So for me, it was a surprise. Uh, this this first single, but but I think it was the the right one. I would say, um, just to you know uh, to catch people off guard because I mean the, they have to listen to the rest of the album. I mean, uh, the whole album is not. It definitely doesn't sound like that. So. Uh, <laughs> No, and, and as you said, it, it is uplifting, and, and uh, I usually work with with very melancholic melodies and with <laughs> very melancholic stuff. So how that song turned out, it, it has a 
it has uplifting feeling, but it's not happy, if you know what I mean. You're right, uh, right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, in that way, it's pretty obvious choice for me. Yeah, definitely a, a good single. And um, well, uh, moving along with the next song, which is going to be, and here is a, a for, forgive me, forgive my rusty finish, but I believe mm. it's pronounced Alco Yes, uh, that's again. Can you tell us in a nutshell what is being spoken in Finnish language? Because um, it, it looks like it's uh, very, uh, sounds very, um, what's the word? I don't know if to say energetic or or strongly. Um, mm. So what what is the main concept behind what is being spoken? <clears throat> well, the, the the theme of the song, the, 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 the lyrical concept is it's based on old Finnish beliefs and it's like a world creation story how people used to believe how the world was created from little islands and so on and uh, I was actually not planned but I was thinking that this song could have worked as an instrumental because it it's, again has quite strong cinematic feeling yes. occasionally but uh Then we had an idea of, of having a spoken word for this song and in Finnish. And uh, I was super lucky to have this Vesamatti Loiri to, to appear on here. He's, uh, I'm sure nobody knows him outside of <laughs> Finland, but he's, uh, he's the most famous actor in Finland. Ever. Yeah, I believe Finnish people are pretty well aware of who he is. I mean, and I say this because uh, when I was mentioning to some uh, Finnish friends that I have and 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 I told them this person was going to be on the album they said oh yeah we know who he is yeah he's a quite an interesting feature <laughs> <laughs> he is you know he's he's his recording artist himself and he he started his career um late 60s and he's been in in a lot of movies and, and he's really really highly respected artist these days and he doesn't do that many shows anymore uh, some church tours once once a year but uh but yeah it's it's I, i was i was totally surprised when i when i when i got him a studio and 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 that that he heard that he likes the song and he he's willing to do this so so that was a magical moment it's you know you can He's like a Finnish, Finnish Johnny Cash to people, so he's he's like that known, like a living legend, so to speak. Even Johnny Cash doesn't live anymore, but you know. <laughs> yeah, so certainly an important feature on your record, and I'm pretty sure you're very happy about it. Yeah, and and, and you know, I wanted to have this sort of like an Orson Welles type of spoken word, that there is something something charismatic and something wise about the, about the voice that is speaking the song even right. though you know people don't have no clue what he is speaking <laughs> right. sort of feel like. yeah that's one of the issues when you don't you know understand finnish but it's always interesting to, to get an idea of what he's yeah. he's talking about uh, and the to relate it with the music of course which is important yeah the album is going to include translated version ah perfect that lyrics, was gonna so. be my next question all right that i think that's That, that's pretty good for us yeah. non-Finnish non speaking people. Um, great. Uh, I, I have another question for that song. Uh, there's a saxophone in that one, right? Mm. Uh, uh, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Sakari Kukko in Tuonela. Is that another artist? Or is... Yeah, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's not Sakari on that uh, song. He's, okay. uh, he's a saxophone player called Janne Huttunen. He's a studio musician, really good with flutes, and, and he was one of these great musicians that was working on another another studio part in the same studio that I was working and and, and we asked him to hey you want to be featured on the album and, and we need we need saxophone solo and uh, he played one alto saxophone and one tenor saxophone solo and we picked up this tenor sax and the only guideline I gave him that try to sound like Sakar Kuk. <laughs> really? Did you really actually tell him that? <laughs> yes. And, okay, because I can, I, know, could, I could feel the, the, the comparison. I mean, it was like, uh, it definitely sounds like Sakari. 
Yes, and <laughs> and Sakari is uh, yeah, he's he's probably the most most known saxophone player in in Finland. So everyone who plays sax knows, knows him and, and, and knows his style because his style is very unique. How he phrases phrases, um, so leads and, and melodies. So so, but, but I, I was really laughing when I heard the result. Of, I told the young that this this player that, that dude, you sound exactly like him. Like you nailed it, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> great, great. Uh, moving along, Essa, the next song in her solitude, uh, featuring, of course, uh, Tommy Jotun. Uh, this, this, this pretty much is, I would say, it's a very amorphous song. <laughs> so, yeah. Do, would you would you think this song could be played live with Amorphis in in future live shows? Uh, I don't know uh, if anyone from the band wants to play. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but but yeah, I, I got your point. It's definitely is, and and that was a song that I was definitely thinking about Tommy. You know, I I wanted to have Tommy on this album because uh, not just that he is my my bandmate, yeah, from Amorphis, but I I really do respect him as as a singer and vocalist, and what he does, he does it really really super good. So, um, and this song was was. Yeah, it's it's made for Tommy, so so right. Uh, That's and, hence yeah. the comparison is inevitable, right? Uh, absolutely, but yeah. it's it's also it's also a band song. There's a lot of playing, and that's I'm I'm really happy about that. I have a at least couple songs on this album that that you can you can really have that the, the joy of the band and and, the, and really like the real band playing on there. So right, and the fact that it is also the heaviest song of the album, I would say, I would dare say. Uh, mm. Brings you know the sound even closer to what you do with the Morpheus. Absolutely, and and this was the the good example of 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 uh, the trump player Sampo, because he's uh, as I said he he's like the uh, in general he's the pop drummer and and plays totally different kind of music and we really really we didn't force him to play hard but but you know you could really see the joy when the pop player can finally play like loud and 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 play. <laughs> play phrases that he doesn't normally do and 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 that was a, that was one of the greatest things on these sessions good good to know and um so for the eighth song uh fading moon which features anneke uh was this collaboration a direct consequence of the previous collaboration in amorphis i mean oh yeah um <laughs> You know, we've been we've been working with uh, Anneke quite a lot. Um, I help her out with her Boor project. I did right. a couple of songs for her, and she she featured on Amorphis Queen of Time album, mm -hmm. and then we toured together, done shows together, and, and you know she's just simply great, great vocalist. And 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 uh, if you speak about the female vocalist, which is is a pretty common today when when gathering started that that wasn't and i think i still consider her voice as as the pioneer of of everything that started the whole whole uh female fronted uh, bands wave so to speak and uh, and and yeah absolutely she's she's got a so recognizable voice that that you know everybody knows immediately that that this is on again and um, that song is perfect for her Yes, it is. It is, and uh, I mean, she sings beautifully, and and it has a a, dis a distinct voice, like pretty much the uh, everybody on on the roster for this album. I mean, I know we uh, we didn't mention Bjorn Street and you know uh, mm. Einar Solberg. I mean, but each one of them, they have uh, a very peculiar type of voice, and I think the the songs fit perfectly with the way they sing. Yeah, that's. That's true, and and uh, I knew that this is going to be something really, really nice because uh, uh, every one of those vocals they are super mus musical and 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 they are absolutely stunning. If if you listen to their own bands and own projects, it's it's like uh, you don't need to even start to explain how good they are, and uh, but also because uh, I'm a big fan of their their sound and their their own music that that was a great motivate motivation for me to to write music for them 
and to really write stuff what what I think is 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 good about them and their voices. So so um, in that way, I think it was perfect match. You know, I I just didn't randomly pick up some vocalist and. and wish that you know somebody could sing on the album and, and it, it definitely didn't work that way it's uh, i really took a lot of care about the different keys in which key i'm going to write these songs for this vocalist and what's what's happening in the songs and what what are the good things what i love about the, what these vocalists and, and uh, from that perspective i think uh, i got some pretty good results Yes, yes, you did, and, and I can certainly certify that. And I'm pretty sure people, when they hear the whole album, they're going to be surprised and pleased with all these different songs with these different, you know, singers. Um, mm. So, uh, Esa, thank you very much, uh, you know, for taking the time to answer our questions. Um, thank you for listening to Sonic Perspectives, the place where we speak music, the universal language of mankind. From music news to concert reviews, interviews, album reviews, exclusive features, and more. Follow us on all our social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Flipboard. My name is Carlos Gomez, and it was a pleasure to speak with Essa Holopainen today. Remember to check out Essa's album Silver Lake by Essa Holopainen out on May 28th. We are going to leave you with Silver Lake's first single, Storm. Enjoy. Stand on the shore, praying under the sky Telling me more to know, or should I believe? This is my home, where I will grow From now Feelings and feels and bleed memories